What's going on, everybody? My name is Elfrin, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today I got an older channel that I have not reacted to since 2020. This is Simple History, and they uploaded a video I've never really, a top, rather, a topic I've never really heard of. So I caught my interest, and I said, "said Why not just react to it?" So today we're reacting to the U.S. invasion of Panama, 1989 to 90. Op just cause. Whatever that's supposed to mean. So, we're going to go ahead and react to this, because I'm going into this totally blind. And we're just going to call it a day there. So, we're going to start this reaction video in 3, 2, 1, go. The U.S. invasion <coughs> of Panama. December 20th, 1989 to January 31st, 1990. Mm. So, less than two months? The United States invasion of Panama in late 1989 was an intervention carried out with the aim to maintain Washington's dominance in Latin America. Among other countries in the region, Panama was of particular importance to the United States, Why? primarily because of the Panama Canal, which connects the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, and its significance for both American military and economic interests. American engagement with the Panama Canal started in 1902 when they assumed construction duties from the French. In 1903, Washington incited the Panamanian independence movement that ultimately resulted with the nation's autonomy from Colombia. It secured the Americans a deal that granted them exclusive and permanent possession of the Panama Canal Zone for substantial financial compensation. Ever since the canal was opened in 1914, it has been a key point of relations between the two nations. Huh. And after World War II ended, the question of control over the canal became a matter of dispute. Inspired by the Egyptians who nationalized the Suez Canal in 1956, Panamanians sought the same right in 1964. Following a riot in which American soldiers killed several Panamanians, the two nations briefly broke off diplomatic relations. The dispute was ultimately resolved in 1977 by signing the Torrijos Carter Treaties. They reached an agreement that Panama would take full control over the canal by December 31, 1999, but under conditions that it remain open for U.S. vessels. By signing the Trijos Carter Treaties, Washington didn't give up its interest in Panama. An ace up their sleeve was Lieutenant Colonel Manuel Noriega, Chief of Military Intelligence. Noriega was a long-serving CIA paid informant and an instrument <coughs> for disrupting Soviet interests in the region. As the de facto ruler of Panama, he also helped Washington keep the country under control. However, during the 1980s, Noriega became a liability with his growing connection to the drug cartels. The call to step down from power turned Noriega away from the USA and towards the Soviets. It was the beginning of his downfall. Washington incited an unsuccessful <coughs> coup against Noriega in 1988 and indicted him for several drug-related crimes. The US refrained from military action, though, primarily because President Reagan didn't want to impede George H.W. Bush's presidential campaign. Bush Sr. was head of the CIA during a period when the agency was fully cooperating with Noriega and was aware of his ties to the drug cartels. Once George H.W. Bush was elected president, these political concerns were no longer relevant. The opportunity arrived in May 1989 when Noriega annulled the victory of the opposition at national elections. The United States put pressure on Noriega to recognize the results of the election, which he persistently refused. Instead, he broke off all ties and declared a state of war between Panama and the United States on December 15, 1989. The following day, troops of the Panamanian Defense Forces, also called the PDF, stopped a group of four American soldiers in a private vehicle and started harassing them. The incident ended with a Marine First Lieutenant being shot and killed. Another American naval officer who witnessed the incident was assaulted and his wife threatened. It was a turning point for President Bush who ordered the execution of Operation Just Cause, the invasion of Panama. <coughs> the Panama okay, so that, it was the name of the actual operation. I thought it was just called Just Cause because it was the name of the title of the video. Like I said, I'm going into this completely blind. Defense forces were <coughs> hardly an equal adversary, with around 16,000 men under arms, organized in two infantry battalions, five infantry companies, one cavalry troop, and two public order companies. The PDF Air Force was comprised of only 500 men and equipped with non-combat aircraft only. The Navy also had only 400 men and a handful of small vessels. With only 28 armored cars, the PDF infantry <coughs> was not capable of putting up much resistance against the U.S. invasion. However, what American generals feared was that the PDF might withdraw to the mountains and engage in guerrilla warfare. In such a case, 
PDF fighters would pose an enormous threat to establishing security in the country. For that reason, the United States Southern Command engaged over 27,000 soldiers for the mission. Almost half of this number, around 13,000 soldiers, were already stationed at U.S. military bases in Panama. Huh. These were soldiers of the 193rd Infantry Brigade, plus a battalion each from the 7th Light Infantry and the 5th Mechanized Infantry Divisions. Additionally, there were also smaller units from the Marines, Air Force, and Navy. Apart from the troops stationed in Panama, most of the D-Day fighting was carried out by the strike force comprising soldiers from the 82nd Airborne Division, the 75th Infantry Regiment, the Army Rangers, Army Special Forces, SEALs, Air Force Special Operations, and Navy Special Boat Units, a total of 7,000 soldiers. The rest of the troops were planned to land in Panama after the main PDF <coughs> forces were defeated in order to pacify the country. General Carl Steiner, operational commander of the forces engaged in Operation Just Cause, set the H hour at 0100 hours on December 20th, 1989. That's 1 a.m. divided into several task forces with specific targets and assignments. These were task forces Red, Atlantic, Pacific, Bayonet, Semper Fi, and Joint Special Ops. Because of the unusual PDF activity on the night of the attack, Steiner moved H hour forward to 0045 hours, not wanting to completely lose the element of surprise. Task Force Bayonet, the troops stationed in Panama, was the first to attack. Their task was probably the most difficult. They were ordered to seize Fort Amador and La Comandencia, the headquarters of the PDF. They moved out at 0045 hours from their starting positions and deployed in three task forces, Gator, Red Devil, and Wildcat. Task Force Gator, assigned with seizing La Comandencia, isolated the headquarters at 0330. They suffered significant casualties while breaking through the streets of Panama, taking fire from small PDF detachments. Once at the target location, Task Force Gator threw everything they had at the PDF forces inside La Comandencia. The complex was destroyed by fire from Sheridan tanks, LAV-25 infantry assault vehicles, assault helicopters, AC-130 gunships, and AH-64 Apache helicopters firing Hellfire missiles. The PDF forces inside, reinforced with public order companies, continued to resist the Americans until late afternoon. They even hit an AH-6 Little Bird helicopter and forced it to make an emergency landing where it exploded after its two-man crew had managed to escape from it. Jeez. At 1600 <clears throat> hours, American soldiers breached the wall and stormed into the complex. Two hours later, La Comandencia was taken and the PDF Central Command was eliminated. At 0045, Task Force Red Devil moved towards Fort Amador, blocking the exit for the troops inside who tried to escape. Fifteen minutes later, the rest of the task force assaulted the base. PDF forces inside rejected calls for surrender and continued to fight until 1645. At 0100 hours, 1300 Rangers of Task Force Red parachuted in over Rio Ato military base, home to 720 men of the 6th and 7th Rifle Company, two of Noriega's most loyal units. The assault was preceded by the attack of two F-117 Nighthawk stealth bombers that each dropped one 2,000-pound bomb with the aim to stun the soldiers at the base. It was the first ever combat mission for the Nighthawks. Really? The bombing had no significant effect, except that it alerted the PDF soldiers of the incoming invasion. They met the U.S. Rangers, who had parachuted in from a height of only 500 feet with concentrated gunfire. Despite Panamanian resistance, the 2nd and 3rd Battalion of the 75th Rangers handled the garrison relatively easily and took control of the entire base and the airfield in less than an hour. Wow. Task Force Red Tango, 1st <clears throat> Battalion of the 75th Rangers, reinforced with C Company of the 3rd Battalion, parachuted in to Tacoman Torrijos Airport on the eastern outskirts of the And they're the just Los dropping Island. tanks in. These units were tasked with prepping the field for the 82nd Airborne Division. With the support of AH-6 assault helicopters and AC-130 gunships, the Rangers easily overpowered the PDF 2nd Airborne Company. Seizing the main terminal was a somewhat more arduous task, since Noriega's men took 347 Brazilian passengers as hostages. Two and a half hours later, the hostages were released and the airport was put under the control of the American forces at the cost of four killed Rangers. Only four? Even though the airstrip was secured, the 2nd Battalion of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment jumped over the Tacoman Torrijos Airport at 0210, 
followed by the rest of the Task Force Pacific units. Along with them, eight M551 Sheridan tanks were dropped. From the airport, soldiers from the 82nd Airborne conducted air assaults on nearby PDF positions at Tinajadas, Panama La Viejo, and Fort Cimarron. After some harsh fighting and with the help of AC-130 gunships, the 82nd Angel of knocked death. out most of the PDF's 1st Infantry Company, 12th Cavalry Squadron, Special Security Anti-Terrorist Unit, and an elite Battalion 2000 with most of their armored vehicles. At 0100, Task Force Atlantic, comprising 1 Battalion of the 7th Infantry Division and 3rd Battalion of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, who were part of the 82nd Airborne Division, both stationed at Panama, started their attack. Their first target was Fort Espinar and the 8th Rifle Company. PDF fighters at the base showed heavy resistance and succumbed only after the barracks were completely destroyed by artillery fire. Much stiffer resistance was faced at the Coco Salo Naval Base, right next to the small U.S. settlement. Soldiers of the PDF's 1st Naval Infantry Company fought for four hours before they surrendered. Task Force Atlantic was also engaged in seizing prison compounds at Renacer and Gamboa, releasing several prisoners charged with organizing the coup against Noriega and one CIA agent. Huh. During the first day of the invasion, special ops units, a marine rifle company, and a light armored vehicle company acted as support for the conventional forces. They were mainly engaged in establishing roadblocks, thus preventing PDF units from reinforcing each other. In the later stages of the operation, they were deployed to outlying provinces with the task of neutralizing local PDF garrisons. Of particular importance was the mission of Task Force White, comprising three platoons of the Navy SEAL Team 4. The force stormed the coast of Panama at H hour in their Zodiac boats. Their target was Punta Patia Airport, where Noriega's personal Learjet was parked. Before they attacked the hangar with Noriega's plane, SEALs blocked the runway by pushing light planes onto it. SEALs ultimately an escape. destroyed Noriega's jet with an AT-4 rocket, but suffered four killed and eight wounded, more mm. than they had anticipated. D-Day was appraised as very successful. Major PDF units were defeated and soldiers that weren't killed or wounded in action either surrendered or dispersed. On the evening of December 20th, a composite brigade of the 7th Infantry Division and the 16th Military Police Brigade arrived in Panama to establish order. For the next four days, they fought the remains of PDF forces that were still resisting. After the capital was secured, forces engaged in stabilization operations turned their attention to other provinces and local PDF garrisons. However, the primary objective of the operation, the capture of Manuel Noriega, had still not been accomplished. Until December 24th, U.S. troops searched locations designated as Noriega's hideouts when they learned that he was still in Panama City. Aware that all his escape routes were cut off, Noriega approached Monsignor Leboa at the Apostolic Nunciature under the control of the Vatican. He sought refuge in the Embassy of the Holy See as an alternative to fleeing to the mountains where he could engage in a guerrilla warfare campaign against the Americans. Not wanting to push the country into an exhausting war, Leboa allowed him to hide in the nunciature on December 24th. It took less than half an hour for the Americans to learn about Noriega's presence in the nunciature. They immediately sent Task Force Green and military police personnel to block the complex with an order to search every vehicle coming in and out of the nunciature. Washington started negotiations with the Vatican to release Noriega from the nunciature. The newly installed Panamanian government and a conference of Panamanian bishops also appealed to Pope John Paul II to release Noriega. The pressure on the Vatican worked. On January 3, 1990, Monsignor Leboa informed American troops that Noriega was leaving the nunciature. Noriega agreed to surrender on condition that he could wear his uniform and leave Panama in secret. At 2053, he was handcuffed by U.S. troops and taken to Howard Air Force Base, where he was arrested by DEA agents. On board the C-130, Noriega left Panama and was taken into custody at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida. Within <laughs> days of the invasion, Noriega's rule of Panama was over. The new government took over, with Guillermo Andara, winner of the 1989 elections, sworn in as president on the night before the invasion. It took three weeks for American troops to completely pacify the country and establish order. On January 31st, wow. 1990, <clears throat> Operation Just Cause officially ended. The U.S. lost 23 men with 325 wounded. 
CDF on the other side had more significant casualties, 205 killed and 1,908 captured. Even though the Americans achieved complete success with the operation, it was met with condemnation by many countries. The Organization of American States passed a resolution deploring U.S. aggression in the independent state of Panama. The General Assembly of the United Nations also condemned the invasion as a violation of international law. Particularly controversial was the force that the U.S. used in pulling down Noriega's regime. It had caused between 300 and 500 civilian casualties and displaced another 20,000 as refugees. After the invasion, Panama's relations with the United States continued to implement the Torrijos-Carter treaties. The canal was ultimately ceded to Panama, but the country remained firmly within the boundaries of America's sphere of influence. Wow. Oh, God. But I did not know anything about this. I didn't even know this existed until this video popped up in my recommended. But she's only 24 deaths? That's incredible. Someone's laughing outside. That's incredible, though. Even though it wasn't a legal invasion, America still whooped ass in a way I wasn't ex expecting. I thought it'd be much more costly. Oh, that's my dad. <laughs> but I'm going to look more into this into the future so I get much more detailed accounts as to the invasion itself. So... I'm going to call it here. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe all that stuff, guys, and I'll see you in the next reaction video. Bye.